Hello guys, this is Eric from Dean Photography and this is my first tutorial, Photoshop tutorial and I'm so excited because I've been waiting for this moment for a very long time so I'm just going to go straight into it um, this image was taken um, here in Dubai one hotel in Dubai and my wife did the makeup she did you know, an amazing job as you can see and the model she has good skin you know, very beautiful lady good skin so there's not so much but subsequently you can always ask questions you know and I'm pretty sure that I will do other tutorials hopefully <laughs> uh, by God's grace like tutorials that have more complex issues that you know I'm pretty sure some of you guys are facing out there so I'm just gonna go straight into it um, so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna first of all start by healing the skin as you can see she has a couple of spots that needs to be healed, a couple of skin issues, which is not that much a problem. And then from there, um, I'm gonna work on the eye, try to take uh, all these lines in the eyes. I don't really know what that's called, <laughs> but the lines under the eyes sometimes they call it the under eye back. So I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, micro dodging and burn technique that I use you know if uh, healing doesn't work I use that and then after that we're going to do um, we're going to do skin sharpening so that the details can really stand out they can really pop out and then after that we're going to do frequency separation yeah frequency separation and that is going to be fun because I don't know I'm pretty sure everybody has their own way of Touching an image and getting into the kind of result of that I have uh, another kind of way which I will really love to show you guys. So just stick around to the end and see. Okay, let's get to it. So, first things first, um, I'm using a Wacom tablet. You know, I can make another tutorial for that if you want. I have to set it up, you know, all that stuff. Well, Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to create a, a new layer. I'm going to call it, double click on it, I can call it. Healing skin, yeah. So that's gonna be my skin texture. So sorry for healing the skin. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight into it. Um, I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm gonna be using the healing brush tool. So as you can see, my healing brush tool has a shortcut A. I actually did that because it's easier for me to reach it on my keyboard. If you want to do that, you can just go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts. But that's gonna be for another time. All right, so. Before we get that, let's get this out of the way. My hardness is at zero percent, and the size will always vary. Some people prefer to use I don't know twenty percent. Um, sorry about that. Some people just uh, I don't know what people use out there, but it just depends on the kind of results you get. So at least I'm gonna sample from here, so you can see the kind of results I get. I sample from around the spot, and boom, it's gone. I kind of like using it because when I heal an issue. I still keep the texture. I could use the I could use a stamp too, clone stamp too, but I don't know, sometimes uh, I think there's a place for that. That's to my opinion. So so I'm just gonna make sure that I sample around the spots so I don't go too crazy and cause the textures to look a little funny so all right so I'm just gonna do that you see I feel close to the texture close to the luminosity like the light that is next to the texture because if I if I heal from if I heal a, a light texture from the dark area it's gonna give me some irregularities so something like this I zoom in closer I heal here very closer I just heal around so I'm gonna look for um, definitely, I'm gonna do this later. I'm gonna fix the flying hairs. That's gonna be for a little bit ahead. Yeah, yeah. All of this, I'm gonna use dodge and burn and fix them up. So I still have more to go, and she doesn't have a lot of problems. She doesn't. She has very good skin, in my opinion. So. Um, just keep healing and 
for the sake of this tutorial, I don't want to put so much time on healing the skin. You can if you want to, you know, but I'm just going to be very fast, very quick, so you guys can see how I edit. So there's a lot of a lot of ways to do this, a lot of ways, and there are thousands of tutorials out there that shows you different ways to do it. So this is how I do it. I know some other people do it like this. So. Okay, so let me see. Let me see before and after. You can see. And the skin still looks intact. It doesn't look like I messed it up. <laughs> Don't know if that's the right word. Okay, so I think I can just come up here, do some more healing. There's nothing, nothing much. You know. So actually, what I had in mind is before doing this tutorial, I wanted to, oops, I wanted to um, heal the skin, or start the tutorial, talk about the skin, and then forward, fast forward it. But she doesn't have a lot of issues, you know. We could just, we could just do it right here now. Okay. So what else is left? What else is left? So in when it comes to dodge and burn. Micro, micro dodge and burn. I'm going to use it to fix a lot of the issues that you see around here. So don't worry about this. Like here in the nose, we're going to fix the lines and all that stuff. So I think we're pretty much almost done. Just like a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to use so much time on this. I just want to make it very, very brief. Okay. So. That's good. Almost done. Like all of this, I'm, I'm going to use the jumper and fix them out. Even the neckline. Okay, so now, what I want to use is the, the stamp, the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to use a flow of, let's say, 3%. And I'm going to change the blending mode to lighter. So what I want to do is, I want to use the clone stamp to lighten like oh, I don't know, too far. let's say like here i just want to light and put some light here i can still do that with dodge and burn but i'm just i just want to show you guys that and my hardness is zero percent i love to work with soft chrome stamp brush too sorry okay so i'm going to sample from here and i'm going to brush in repeatedly let's see before and after see yeah it looks much better Sometimes when you get too close, you can't really see what you're doing. So, like this one, if I get too close, I can't really see what I'm doing. So I have to stay out of range where my eyes can see what I'm doing. So, a sample, and I take up the line. You see before, after. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not that much, but you get the point. Okay. So for this ones, um, let me see. I'm just gonna try that. Doesn't look so good, but I'm gonna use. Dodge and burn, yeah, keep repeating that to fix some of the other issues. Like for this, I'm not sure, it's just personal preference. This is her bird, I think her bird mark. So it's pointless for me to take it out. No, it's, it's fine. Okay, so now let's go over to the, the flyway. I'm not going to do a lot on that, but I'm going to create a layer. I'm going to call it hair. Fly away. Yeah, okay. So for this, I'm going to use the um, spot healing brush. Mine is our, like I said, I'm going to do another tutorial where I explain why. I'm going to take that, and of course, my hardness is set to zero. Yeah, I don't know. Some other people prefer something else. So I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to change my blending mode to lighten. So what it does is it's going to take the dark pixels and make them lighter. I could use this clone stand too, but in this case I prefer to use this um, method because I can still maintain texture while taking up. Let me show you an example. So I'm just going to 
pull down on it. Just brush on the line. Just like that. And voila. See? Before? After. Yeah, it's not so perfect, but it's manageable. So I don't want to get rid of all of these hairs here. I think it's okay. To me, I think it's okay. So I'm just gonna let it be, but let me see if I can take off this one. Yeah, that's fine. Take off this one. That's fine. Take off this one. Yeah, I think that's pretty much okay. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna fix this. So now I can use the clone stamp. Three percent. Uh, I can put it to five percent flow. So I'm gonna change the blending mode back to normal. I'm gonna sample around here. Then I can brush. So see before, after, before, after. I think I'm gonna do the same here. Before, after. Okay, so if there's anything here, I will definitely fix it later as I go. But I can still use the healing brush sample here and try to. Yeah, looks better. And here, let me see if I can use it to fix this. Yeah, it looks better to me. I know it's kind of sloppy, but. Like I said, I don't want to spend so much time on, on the skin. Yeah, for the hair flyaways, that could be another tutorial for another time, you know. So let's just concentrate on the skin for now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, uh, um, I want to do the under eyes, this one. So there are two ways to do it. So let me just say, I create a layer. I call it, the big call it under eyes. Okay, so. First method, we use the clone stamp, use only close, change the blending mode to lighten and flow to 3%. And remember, it's the hardness is zero. Uh, I already changed that. So I sample here, and then I make sure as I sample and brush, I just give it a couple of brush strokes as I hold it down and move around. And I don't lift up my hand it's run down. Okay. I see the before, I see the after. You see? Before, after. It looks much better. So I don't know, some people don't really want that to take it all out. So in this case I'm just gonna reduce it just a little bit. I'm not gonna take it, I'm not gonna be so harsh and back up the other one. Just a bit of it out. Yeah, I think that's fine. Before, after. I think I can work with that. I don't want one to look so fake also. So here, what I can do here is I'm pretty sure I will use the I'm pretty sure I will use the dodge and burn method to fix this. So another way you can clean under the eyes is using the dodge and burn. So that's what I'll do on this other side. So let's get to that. So we're gonna have to do this. I'm gonna create a two curve adjustment layers. Two curves. And the first one I'm gonna label it dodge. And the second one I'm gonna label it burn. So for this second one, I'm going to click here so that it brings me the properties. And uh, if you see, I, I changed the, how can I call that? Um, I changed the way my display is. Uh, that's called workspace. <laughs> Sorry. I changed my workspace. Um, yeah, everything's on the right side. For me, that works that way, so I don't have to be moving my hand far across the screen. Okay, I can do an tutorial of that. Just tell me. Then I can do another tutorial how to do that. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So 
and for the, the burn I'm going to drop down the curve you see like here yeah I think that's fine and then I'm going to on on, uh, on Mac I'm going to take command I which is to invert the layer uh, invert the mask and on Windows is control I so command I to invert then I come to the dodge and I bring up the curve yeah I think about it that's fine I click on the mask I take command I which is control I on Windows to invert it and then I'm going to change the luminosity change <laughs> the blending mode to luminosity and for both of them so the reason I did that is because I don't want to be healing on this um, I don't want to be doing my corrective dodging and burning and affecting the color. I just want to affect the luminosity, the shadow, and the highlights, the dark and the light. I don't want to affect the color. I'm going to do another tutorial another time and explain why. So for now, I'm going to put these two layers. I take a whole shift and select two of them. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to create a folder. Yeah. I just created a folder and they went into the folder. So I'm going to call it Dodge and Burn. Burn. <laughs> burn. Okay. And then next, uh, I'm going to create a helper layer. Something that can help me. Because sometimes when you look at the image for so long, looking at the color version, your eyes can get a little bit too tired and used to, and you might overlook some issues and think it's okay. So the, bottom, the, the the black and white layer, the help layer is gonna it's gonna be in black and white. I'm gonna create it. You're gonna see. So it's gonna help me to see the spots. You know, uh, you know more. How can I put? It? It's just helping me out. That's why it's called a helper layer. So it's gonna be help, helper layer. Okay. So I'm gonna create a solid color, and we're just gonna choose gray. Somewhere in the middle is fine. It doesn't have to be exactly like what I have here. So I take OK. And I'm going to change the blending mode to, yeah, I can take saturation or color. Let me just take saturation. It gives me a black and white representation of the image. Then I'm going to change the, uh, I'm going to create a curves layer. And I'm going to take down the shadow. I'm going to take down the curve so that it can darken the image. So the, the, the issues that I want to fix will be more visible. So I take it down, as you can see, I see more and more issues. Whereas when it was like this, it was hiding a lot. So I bring it down, you can see around the mouth, the bad spots, and the cheekbone. Yeah, I think that's enough. Okay, okay, like that. So I'm going to come to my dodge layer, and I'm going to use the, the brush tool. Here's the brush tool. Yeah. Um, I'm going to zoom in. Um, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to start first with the issue over here with this spot. So I'm going to change my flow to let's say four percent. It's okay. Blending mode is normal, and hardness, yeah, zero. I use zero a lot. Okay, so that's fine. So you make sure that here the mask is white. If it's not white. You press X to change. If it's black, you press press X to change, or you can just click on it here. So it's, only, it's, it's white. So now I'm painting white on black. So white reveals, black conceals. So I want to reveal what has been concealed behind here. So there we go. Just brush and check. Brush, brush, brush. So it's. Uh, I change the brush, the brush, sorry, brush size. <laughs> My God, it's 2:49 a.m. Yeah, I'm so tired, but I really wanted to do this thing, guys. So, bear with me. Okay, so I change the brush size, increase it as I want, depending on how much I want to lighten. So I just keep changing it, changing it until it suits me. This is the spot. So, well, actually, oh, I have to undo that. It's a little bit too much. You could you could do undo if you have a if you create 
to make the place too bright just like for example here you just control Z or if you do that you can still you can still come back here and change this to black to conceal and change the flow to uh, sorry 100 and you can take it out so yeah so then I can change back the flow to 4% keep working change this to white so my god I'm so tired and I was just fired up to do this for you guys so all right so uh, I'm not going to do so much here you know you can take time and you can make this look really really I mean really amazing you know I don't know if this any such thing is perfect but yeah everything can be improved on I think so I'm just going to show you the before and after and we're going to see how it looks like okay yeah that's a little too much that so all right so look before after so i'm going to take off the helper layer and we look at the presentation before after okay so looking at it um there are some issues here with the luminosity the way it has shifted the colors so what i could actually do is i can create a hue saturation layer i can I press Oh my god, option, option on Windows, art on, on Mac. I come in between these lines so I can clip the mask to the dodge layer. And then I come over to the lightness and I can drop down, drop it down just a little bit. That's before, that's after. So, you see, it looks much better. So, the thing is. I'm going to come back here later and um, I will use um, a frequency separation um, to blend in this colors. So it's not going to look like this. So let me just let me just continue. So I'm going to put back the helper layer on, come back to the dodge, and keep going. Remember, four percent flow. So and for this. Uh, I'm not going to be too careful, you know, like I said, you can always take time and make it to be very perfect, uh, I'm using the word perfect, make it to look much better, so, okay, and then come down here, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, let's add some light to it, so, it's, so the whole idea is, we're trying to put some light into the dark spots, so by the time you do the frequency separation um you wouldn't have to be so so hard with it because frequency separation sometimes it can just make the skin to look a little bit too flat you know the frequency separation is an amazing technique you know don't worry i'll get to that very soon so i come around here and try to add some light and if you look at the mask look at how it looks like this how the mask looks like. So I just press Option on Windows out on Mac, and yeah, see. So that's what I've been doing so far. So I just keep doing that, and just trying to add some light, you know. So for the next tutorial, I'm not sure what I'll be doing, but I'm pretty. Uh, I'm looking forward to that, you know. I'm going to do something more intense, you know, where I can take like, um, I don't know, maybe an hour or something, and really show you how to use Dodge and Burn, you know, like how, if you want to go deep into it, you know, I don't think it takes so much time, it also depends on the image, but some people prefer to take that time to do it, some people don't, some people just, you know, pretty much, um do just a little bit and yeah okay so it's just personal preference so now i can i can check again you see before after before after yeah not looking bad huh so just gonna do a little bit around the loop so yeah i have a larger brush because that's the issue there it's larger brush here i can do a bit smaller Good idea just to 
try to soften the transitions between the shadows and highlights. I think that's the whole idea. You know, it's almost like you're trying to create a flat looking image and then from there you can decide to do a global dodge and burn. I'm going to show you how to do global dodge and burn so that you can sculpt the face. <laughs> that's a nice word. Sculpt the face in the way you want it. So now. Um, I don't know, maybe I could go ahead and speed this up so I don't bore you guys. But, you know, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use a larger brush and just, um, for the sake of time, I don't want to use so much time. I don't want to use too long of the tutorial. I'm just going to use a larger brush and just do some few brush strokes. Yeah, not very much. Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, let's see. Under the eyes. Okay, you remember we hit this, right? So we could still use this to fix, to make it look even better. So. so. Okay. Yep. Some people take like. 15 20 minutes for this. Some people take about an hour. Some people can take two hours. <laughs> it's a long time. Yeah, to be on one image. It can be so boring, but it's it's necessary, trust me. It's very, very necessary. It, it, it really elevates the image. It, it brings it out. Okay, so all of these places here, uh, let me see if it makes it look much better. So actually, you know, the thing about this technique is there are two ways you can do it, you know. Some some people, they, they go right in, right down to the micro level and even out every dark spot, every shadowy place, you know. But for me, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use a larger brush, you know. And then mix it out. Small spot, large spot, yeah, something like that. Okay, so under the chain we have this places to look after. Yeah, it's gonna go a little bit tiny here. Sometimes it's not very good to zoom in for too long because you might <laughs> you might just go crazy with it and by the time you zoom out, oh my god, 50 minutes gone. And then you're like, oh, well, I have to go back, I have to undo, I have to. You know, so sometimes it's good to look at it from afar, then you can do this too before and after to just make sure that you don't go too crazy with it because, yeah, you can actually go crazy with it. Okay, so, ah, oh, guys, forgive me, I'm just gonna be so sloppy about this here. I just don't want to do a very long tutorial. Yeah, I keep saying that I know. Okay, so I think okay. I think this is it. Um doing the frequency separation we can even add a lot of that. Okay, yeah, the neck. I just forgot. So for the neck, remember the stamp tool we used? And we didn't use it a lot because I was gonna show you guys. This other technique we could use. So, okay, so just lighten it, lighten it, lighten it before, after, before, after. Okay, so just give me the light. Alright. Like I said, you can go crazy with it. There's no limit to how far you can go. One thing I love about Photoshop is you can just be as creative as you want. No body, there's no limit to how far you can go with it. Yeah. I, 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 I've watched a lot of tutorials and to be honest with you guys, I think it's much better after some time 
you try to follow your instinct, I don't know. Yeah, instinct, I guess that's the right word. But your intuition. Because there's some things that I'm going to show you here where I just kind of follow my intuition. Um, there are questions that you ask yourself, like, can I, can't I just achieve this by using that? And then you try it, it works. It's like, wow, it worked. So I'm just going to try to do that here. Yeah, I'm going to use the African Supervision to do that, trust me. I know some people don't like it. Some people think it's cruel. It's very, very crazy. It's too rough. Yeah. But, you know, it's not like I'm looking for an award winning image with this. I'm just trying to make something that looks really nice. And it shows the makeup and shows the model's beauty also. Without too much of altering of the skin. So I'm going to be very mad with the frequency separation. You know? um, that also depends, you know, if you guys can see clearly because sometimes you have to go a little bit too hard. So just for demonstrative purposes. Okay, so I thought I was done, but I'm gonna, I just keep seeing things. So like I'm saying, you, the thing about Dodge and Burns, there is no limit to how much you can go with it. You, know, you can go crazy. You know, you can correct a lot. So, you see, before, before, after. You look at the transition between the shadows and the highlights, it's a little bit softer. It's more softer. So, for, for the burn, during this, this step, I rarely use the burn, to be honest with you guys. Uh, I'm going to step it down to, let's say, 2%. That's a little bit too low, but I don't want it to be too crazy. Also. I'm just trying to darken. Oops. I can do that. Okay. So, I'm going to look at it from a before and after. For the lighting. I don't really know where to darken. You can see. It's before and after. Yeah, the back end, you see, looks better, right? Okay. So I'm just going to drop this. Alright. So, um, I think we can just move on to the next step. So I'm going to take off the helper layer. I'm going to show you before and after. So what I want to do now is I want to create a visible stem of all the layers. So I go, I take new layer, and then I oh, control, I'm sorry, shift, command, art, E on Mac, on Windows, shift, control, art, E. And then I'm going to go to filter, come down to other, high pass, and then I'm going to use the value of three because it works with this image. If I go a little bit too higher, it's going to give me this funny color on the edges is hollow. I don't want that. So I'm going to stick to three. Press enter. I'm going to take control command U and Mac, control U and Windows. Then I'm going to take out all the color, the saturation, take it down to zero, take OK, and change the blending mode to overlay. Alright. So now I'm going to put off this layer for now. You're going to understand why. I'm going to create a new layer and I have a couple of actions here. So um I have an action for frequency separation. Um, there's a lot about frequency separation out there. You guys can just check it out. But what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description for this uh, action I'm using. So I have to create a I have to create a blank layer for this to work. So I'm using an 8-bit image. I'm working on an 8-bit, not 16-bit. Like you can see here, if you go under image, you come to mode. You see I'm working on RGB color 8-bit. So I want to click on what I have here. Click on it and. I'm going to stick to the value. I'm going to stick to 3. It works for me for this image. I tried it before. I'm going to stick to 3. Click OK. And I'm going to collapse this down. I'm going to bring, hold, and drag up the layer with the, the high pass layer. And you're going to understand why it's there. So now, what frequency separation does is that it separates the image into 2. Frequencies. You have the low frequency, which is the color and light, and the high frequency, which is 
the texture. So we're going to be working on the low frequency, which is the color and light. So we're going to be using the mixer brush. This is it. And you can stick to these values. You know, here I say, you can just see, um, I'm sure this is clean brush, and then just stick to these values. So I'm going to change my flow to 10% for this image. And then, yeah, there's not so much to do here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be brushing on the image like a few strokes while holding my pen on the tablet. I go up, down, up, down. And then I move to this up, down, up, down. So what I'm doing here is I'm blending the text. I'm, I'm blending the colors. So the transition between this pinkish light color here and this brownish color here, the transition is not so hard. I just do that a couple of times. I come in here, I reduce the brush size. Some people work with larger brushes, which is still fine. You know, sometimes I do that too. But I always vary the brush as I go. So I'm not doing a lot of it. I can just do it for a couple of like strokes and then I'm done on that spot. Because I don't want it to look too too overly touched. So you can see the before, you can see the after. Something very slightly, but you can see the difference. Alright, so I'm just gonna keep doing that. Reduce the size, increase the size. Okay. So yeah, you see before, after. So here you can see a lot of the change. So I'll go here. I change the flow to twenty percent, so I can affect more of the text of the color and light of the new layer. So oh my God, I'm so so tired. It's just been a long day for me. So let's see if this is working before. After. Like I said, it's very, very small. It's very, very small. You can't really see. I don't want to go too crazy with it, you know. So if if I don't get what I'm looking for, I just go over it a couple of times. But I don't stay there with the. I don't go up and down, up and down low. I do that one, two, three. I lift it up one, two, three. I lift it up. I prefer to do that over and over than to just do one stroke, hold on the pen, and just brush it till no, no, no. Yeah, I don't know. That's just my personal preference. So I come to the chain. I try to assist in that. Let me see. Zoom in a little bit. Like I said, sometimes I use smaller brush and then I increase the size. You know, like when I come to where these transitions are, just try to soften out the transitions. You can see the before and the after, before, after. Yeah, I can always wipe this spill later. I hope I don't forget. So I just keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. You know, you see how the image is going to look over time. So, you can take your time and do this. Of course, you can. You don't have to be as quick as I am. Like, for, this, for the sake of the story, I don't want to take so much time. So, I'm just going really quick, really fast. Alright, that's nice. So, do some back here, some here. Come around here. So, I don't want to do it and bring this. Here, you don't want to do like this, do like this. No, that's crazy. There's some cases where you might want to use the light to reduce how dark a portion of the image looks, but it's I don't know. I don't I don't I don't do that a lot. Just maybe one, two times, just a few times if I really have to. But for this image, I don't really have any serious issues. So as you can see. I just do a little bit of that under here. No, I have to go back. See, it's kind of shifting the pixels. I don't want to go too crazy there. So I can change the flow to 10%. Okay. Brush two, three times. What is that? Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Let me go back to 20. Do more of that. Oh my god, it's so so warm in here. You can't stay on the map. Now, here in Dubai, especially this time of the year, the summer is just 
unfortunately hard. I mean what I'm saying. So I had to put up the AC, put up the fan because I didn't want to get into the mic. And since this is my first tutorial, I'm just trying to see what I can make out of this and what you guys can learn from it. And together we can improve on it. You know, I'm pretty sure there's so much that I can learn from you guys too because a lot of people have various ways of how to do especially skin edits in Photoshop, you know. So this is before, after, before, after. Okay, so not so bad. Yeah, so I just come here. Just have to remove that here. Oops. Control Z, Command Z, Command Z, make a mistake. Yeah, just trying to command it in. Honestly, guys, this this is a very sloppy way of doing it. You know, but <coughs> excuse me, you can do better than me. I'm telling you. I'm just trying to show you the power of frequency separation mixed with dodge and burn. Some dodge and burn. It's a very good combination. I didn't know about that before. What I used to do is. I used to use only frequency separation. You can imagine, like I heal the skin, and then sometimes I don't even heal the skin. I just go straight into frequency separation. Oh my god! All right, you remember? Sorry, uh, this late, this this place. I told you I was going to try to use frequency separation and fix it up. <coughs> oh my god! Gotta get some water. So, um, <sighs> feel much better. Okay. Sorry about that. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. You see, I'm trying to like, but what I do here is I take the color from here, I try to push it in. I try to push it in. That's what I'm trying to do here. Here, this is one of the rare cases where I do that. I know some people never do this. I know that. And of course, there are other tutorials like if you're doing something for a beauty, let's say a magazine or something like that, of course, you can't do this. This is very nasty. You know, you have to be, um, I can do a tutorial on how to, like, sorry, correct the skin under the eyes, correct the saturation and the hue, the luminosity. I can do a tutorial about that. But guys, just let me know in the comments what you want. I'll do my best, you know. I don't know so much about Photoshop, to be honest with you guys. I'm just... You know, having fun with it like a lot of you out there, and I'll definitely be happy to learn some of your techniques. You know, we learn from each other, and that's how we grow. You know, sharing what we know. Yeah, that kind of rhyme. So, I'm just doing this on the forehead, and like I said, I'm not doing a lot. I just do two, three. One two three, one two three. I raise it up. One two three, raise it up. One two three, raise it up. And that's it. I don't want to be too crazy about it. So let's see. Before, after, before, after. Okay. So actually, here I kind of took out the highlight, but when I'm dodging and burning, I'm gonna bring it back. Okay. So let's just do the neck. I think I'm, I'm going to leave the face like that for now. Let's just do the neck area. Do the neck. So I'm, 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 I'm just in between where transitions are. Whether color transition or shadows and highlights. I just go in between and scrub and scrub. So I'm trying to Soften the transition, that's what I'm trying to do here. The frequency separation is a very good tool in that. You can use dodge and burn, of course. I mean, you can use it and you can do all kinds of things. There are so many edits where you don't even need to use frequency separation. You know, like actually, a lot of um, the pros out there, they don't even worry about frequency separation. They think it's a crazy tool. Yeah. Well, that's just their opinion. Alright, 
Ya, mungkin masker. Saya tidak am. Tidak am. So if if you if you if you if you because I just need to go back. I don't want to. I don't want to mess up the part now. So if you have a skill, you can just create a a mask masking layer in the group. I'm not sure how to do it. So I have, I have a small skill here in the chain. I'm going to just create a mask layer, put a mask on it, and then use a brush tool and try to fill it to the 100%. Then make sure that white reveals, black conceals. Press X, take it to black, and then just conceal the spear before after yeah that's it so now i think that's cool for now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put on the high pass layer you see what it does this is without it and this is with it this is with that this is with it so it adds more texture to the skin so yeah it looks edited but at least it doesn't look too soft so I think that's pretty much it. Um, what I can do for the lips, I can just create. We try to do this post down to. I just want to uh, put this a little bit in harder. I do 5% too. Blending more to normal. My god, I'm sweating over here. Okay, so. Do the sampling. And now, yeah, I think that's what I wanted to do. That's fine. Let's see, maybe we can add a little bit of this here. Okay. Yeah. Before, okay. So I'm just going to call it lip fix. Lip uh, fix. I always try to name a name layer, so when I come back, I'll get a little bit of this. So we're going to do the dodge and burn. That's the global dodge and burn. What we just did, the one we did, remember how we did it. We started with the empty layer, we went to the healing. Here's the skin, the flyaway hair, the under eye, dodge and burn. And this dodge and burn was, let me just name it local dodge and burn. And what we're going to, we're going to do now is the global dodge and burn. So we're going to create a folder, and name it global. Dodge and burn. Okay, cool. So we're gonna create just like the same, like the other version. Go ahead, create two curves. Curve layers, curves, two curves. <laughs> and done. So bad. Okay. So for this, we're gonna name this Dodge, and then we're gonna name this Burn. Yeah. So for the burn, we're gonna drag the curve down, darken it, then change the um, blending mode to luminosity. Click on the mask, control I for Windows, command I for Mac to invert it. We come to the dust layer, take it up a little bit, change the blending mode to luminosity. And control I for Mac, command I for Windows to invert it. Then we're going to take a brush tool and make sure that the, okay, the hardness is 0%, the, the flow, because it's 100, the flow, I can say 2%. I don't want to, don't want to go too crazy. Then here, I'm going to press X to change this. White reveals, black conceals. So I'm going to go to the white. Zoom in, then um, I'm going to take off the frequency separation. One more thing, I have to put the I need to put the black and white. I'm going to create a solid color that's going to give us a helping hand. So I'm going to get to kind of the image, change the layer to color, and I think it's better if I put it outside. So if you put it up. Ah, inside is fine. Inside is fine. So, 
the frequency separation layer. The reason why I'm putting it up is because after doing the frequency separation, we made a mistake here, and there are mistakes in other places. And when you alter the light and the shadow, the image starts looking real fake. <laughs> I'm gonna want that. So I'm gonna put up a frequency separation layer. I'm gonna go to the dodge layer and have my brush 32% flow. And I'm just gonna brush slightly. Brush a couple of times. Put it on. Try not to do it before. Okay. Let's go a bit further. Sometimes it's not always good to go to close. I just did that for focus. So I'm gonna put up a frequency separation layer. Continue the dodge. I just go back where the light was. I'm not trying to alter the lighting of the image. No. I'm just going back to emphasize on the light of the image because what frequency separation did was that it took it altered the light. So I'm just trying to correct that. No, I don't know if that's the right way to say. So yeah. And then here put the light in. And then Yeah. yeah, you can go crazy with this, like really. You could go overboard. You could do a lot. But this image, I, I don't really see a lot to do with the highlights. I don't know how to show this. Let me show this. So, do that. Check before, after. I can put up the black and white. Put, up the sequence, put on the frequency separation layer before, after. You see, it's not it's not much. It's really not that much. Look, that's it. Yeah. And from looking at this, I think I need to reduce it a little bit. So I'm going to change back to black, and then I'm just going to try to reduce this up there. So it's not too strong because I don't want the attention of the eyes. This, yeah. You see, very mild. I'm going to go to the burn. Put on the black and white layer, the helper layer. I could just call it helper. Put up the frequency separation. Go to burn. And then just maintain the shadow. Oh, no, sorry, let me change this to white. Maintain the shadow. Maintain the shadow. I'm not doing a lot, as you can see. I'm going to even change this flow to 1%. I don't want it to look too crazy. You see, I just go back to the places where the shadows were, and what what happens is that it it adds the contrast of the image. It makes the image look really more contrasting. So I have to in there. Okay. And in the future, I'm going to do more tutorials on more beauty stuff tutorials on how to edit beauty. Like from the brows to lashes and color correction and all that stuff. So, you see? Before, after, nothing much. And here I just start in a little bit, maybe darker here. Here I just a bit around the lips, contour. The makeup is called contour and highlights. Dodge. So, in Photoshop, it's dodge and burn. So, before, after. Then it's burn under the loop here, so that the mask will come down. Then, under the edge. You see the burn here, a little bit burn there. You see, it does need a lot, you know. But there's some cases where you can go extreme, you know. It depends on the kind of project you're working on. Here, here. Do a bit of burn. So you see, I'm burning on the places that already look darker, and it's just a little bit. Then lightening, dodging the places that look a little bit lighter. So I'm not going too crazy. I put on the frequency separation, put up the helper, do it before, after. Let's see the burn. Before, after, before, after. You see, it's not crazy. It's not. Just a little bit. I'm even thinking I need to reduce the burn here. I'm gonna go back to black. Let's reduce it a little bit. 
Yeah, I think that's okay. All right. So let's see. So far, so good. Before, after. Before, after. So what next? We're gonna do some color grading. Yeah. Okay. One more thing. Um, I almost forgot. We have to bend around the eyes. It helps when you bend around the eyes. I'm going to go to 2%. I'm going to change it back to review. Okay, 2%. I kind of have the shortcut. But the shortcut works when you have this down. Okay? Um, when you have enable airbrush, the shortcut is to, you just press 0 02. 0 02. So if you take it off, you press 0 02, it's going to affect the opacity. So, you press zero, it goes to 100%. Then you have this down, it is zero one. So that takes just a fair. So zero two is cool. Okay, so this one is good out of the way. So now I'm just gonna bring the line on and the eye down the lead and then burn here, bend a little bit here, see before, after. You know the eyes they play a very big role in an image, especially in the portrait. You want the eyes to pop out. So this eyes, um, I think they're a little bit, a little bit, a little bit So I'm gonna use the lasso tool. The lasso tool. I'm gonna put this group. So I'm gonna have uh, this selected, add selection. So you're gonna understand why. And I just scroll down and draw. You don't, it doesn't have to be a perfect selection, guys. It's fine. Yeah, this is very tiny. Okay, I just want to have it. And then now, I'm going to come, I'm going to select this. And good. So when I have that down, it gave me the opportunity to select multiple places. So I'm going to come here. Um, so what this place does, this button does, it's a, uh, it gives you an option. It's called editing quick ma mask mode. <laughs> editing quick mask mode. You click on it, and then you go to. I want to blur it. You just say blur filter blur Gaussian blur. Then you change the value. I'm gonna use let's say eight. It works with this image. I think. So it's softer, only soften the edges. See before, after, before, after. Help me to soften the edges. So the transition is not crazy and wild. Then I click back on it. Then I go to uh, selective color. And I change the colors to neutral. And then I shift the blacks like 7, 8, uh, 9%. Sometimes I just stick to minus 9. I don't go up with that. Then the yellows and drop it down to like let's say eight eight percent magenta add some green to like eight percent that's fine so before after yeah so this is before this is after so that's cool so I'll, I'll actually want I actually want to bring it in the dodge and burn because I want to come back and burn on burn the shadows back in here. Because when I added the when I did added the black and the neutral, you can see it looks it looks much better. I did affect the shadow cast from the lash. So so far so good. So let's go over to color correction. So we're just gonna start with a selective color layer, and we're gonna start with the reds. So what I what I what I usually do here is I just play with it. I don't really have a a set value that I use. I just go a little bit too crazy this way. It gives a lot of red. Come back to here. Too much yellow. Let me see. Yeah, this is still this. I don't know if there's a particular way in doing it, but. I already have a lot of red in the image, so I just want to add some yellow. 
see that's yellow magenta um I think I'm gonna stick it yeah let's see plus two I don't really mess with this a lot but that's fine hmm. there's not so much change but it, I, it helped me to reduce the reds if you can see right on the screen then I'm gonna go on next I'm gonna go to the no oh, sorry the yellows play with the yellows see what I can get out of it yeah let's say plus three ish magenta yeah we have low magenta so that's cool yeah this works. I don't really know, but every image you just have to play with it. I really mess with the blacks. And just double click to go back to the yellows and greens, not really, they're just not really. You can still play with all of them. So I'm gonna go to color balance and I'm gonna start with the highlights. I wanna add some more cyan to the highlight. Yeah, that works. So now blue before, after, before, after. Yeah, I think that's fine. That's okay for now. And then you can add some curves. Let's go to red. So you can draw down the red a little bit down. Let's take a bit down. It's so insignificant again. Greens, let's take a bit down. And then blues, I think I want to add some blue. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to put them, uh, I'll just call it color gray. And of course, you can go way more than this. This is just for the purpose of this. That's it. Before, after, before, after. Nothing much. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this section of the tutorial. And pretty much, I think this is where I stop for now. And I would love to do more. Okay. So I'm just going to put this out there and then. You guys just leave me comments down below what you think, what you think I can improve on. Um, also, if you have any special requests for uh, something on the Photoshop, I would love to do that. I'll be very, very happy to do that. And thank you so much and have a wonderful, wonderful day.